And welcome back once again to the PCS Spring Split Playoffs. We are in game number three, although if you're checking your watch, you wouldn't know it because that was a 50-minute game in number two, sitting on the precipice there for a long time before Deep Cross tipped it over the edge to go on to match point here. Before we get into our pregame banter for game number three, which could be the final one, let's go ahead and once again thank our wonderful sponsor, CTBC Bank and Caliber. Thank you for making all of this madness possible. And uh, so that everyone can see Clement's adorable kitty. <laughs> Thanks for uh, giving Rumi a shout out right there. Uh, but as we awesome. head on into this series, we do have Frank Esports once again on blue side. And I really don't expect much changes coming out from either of these teams. I think it's still going to very much be front to back team fight from Frank Esports because they have been getting away with it despite good early games from uh, the side of DCG and for Deep Cross Gaming. I still think they go tempo. They have shown that uh, Messi actually has the picks to do so. The Ari is still a threat, and this time around, the LeBlanc, I felt like he actually did a very good job at poking out targets, especially targeting those without the MR. I, I think, uh, yeah, I think that threat was always really, really, uh, really, really good from the side of Deep Cross, and it did make Frank second guess a lot of things. I do have a question for you, Clement. Do you think that the Aphelios is actually worth the ban? Because, obviously, they might end up giving up the Jinx on their side if they do it. But, I mean, Eminem almost kind of clawed that game back single-handedly. Uh, to be completely honest, I don't think so. I, I, I think you're pretty happy giving over Aphelios and having the superior support matchup or just getting the Zaya and just pushing in. The problem with DCG is not that they, you know, they, they actually even won lane. The problem was that they just had a couple of mishaps, especially from Hana, giving over kills and tower trades that allowed them to get that scaling game on. So I don't think Aphelios has been all that uh, influential, if I'm being completely honest. And I'm not even sure that Frank Esports play that well around uh, defending the uh, the Aphelios from what we've seen. Eminem has been very aggressive needing to flash forward. He has been. And and, and yeah, his team not, not really forming a, a circle around him has been kind of the trouble in some of these very late game fights. All the same, he still played a couple of hero plays. I guess it wasn't quite enough. Um, yeah, I'm curious to see if Frank mix it up in the draft uh, any further because it, it did seem like a lot of it did come down to execution and really failure to, to start on the execution because they were so afraid in some cases where they had the lead. But we are into picks and bands. We'll get some answers to our questions in this one as we see very similar bands coming through. Once more, the Ari band on red side by Deep Cross as Frank have yet again elected for blue. Yep, and we should expect a very similar draft strategies around here. Frank Esports in the previous game, they were willing to first pick the Aphelios. Ooh. This time around though, they banned the Zyre for themselves. This is interesting because it, it kind of flies against the logic here. It seems like DCG want to go for a different AD carry in the face of Aphelios, even though Zaya has been sort of the best counter. Yeah, I, I feel like they want the handshake, the uh, the 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 jinx uh, for Chris Gata that he has a lot of those pop off games on, and just let him and him have it because if it does go to late game, they can at least match the amount of damage being dished. Uh, but they do give up the Lee Sin for Holofort. Actually, are they gonna opt to take the Aphelios themselves? I mean, Chris Gata's played pretty much the same amount of games on both these champions, so yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about this one. I actually think, uh, for, for me, Aphelios is the one that has a little bit more lane catch potential because of the Gravitim, but Jinx does pop off a bit harder in the mid game if you're in an even situation. So this is a trade-off that I am a little bit suspect of. Uh, and you do have Frank Esports this time trying to solidify Pretender and Holo. This is the matchup that I think has the highest op chance to actually flip sides. Because Pretender, in my estimation, is actually a very strong mid laner. I actually feel like he's a bit better than Nesty. Uh, so if they give him the strong early mid game setup, they could change the entire matchup. And uh, frankly, there are still enough hyper carries for uh, Eminem to, to still go on something like the Jinx here. Yeah, I mean, they, they have a really strong setup on the Frank side with the Lee Sin for Holo and now Pretender on this LeBlanc, Eminem on a late game hyper carry. It definitely has all the ingredients for what they want here. We'll have to see how Deep Cross match on the pressure uh, as Nesty has had his champion pool cut down. Does he just fall back on the rise or does he have some tricks up his sleeve? Don't know if this is a troll hover or not. You never know with this man. I'm pretty sure it's a troll. <laughs> it's not really playable right now. And it is I tried to keep rise. them as deep. No, it's Rise Up. Okay, so there we go. One of his most played champions into, into the LeBlanc. Going to try to go for that tank setup. But they do have the Viego for Hana, so there is a lot of reset pop-off potential there. 
And this time around, we are going to see DCG actually flipping the switch and going for the late game strategy. Um, it's always interesting to see Frank try to play early game. They have been able to do this, and Holo actually has some very exciting games on the Lee Sin. It's not their main strategy for sure. They rarely go for this comp, but, you know, to be frank, it, it has worked up before, so we'll see what they can do with it. Mm -hmm. On the other and side, DCG, full team fight comp. It's also a little bit iffy. I think they're better at 1-3-1, if I'm being honest. I, I don't think their objective fight is necessarily the strongest of their suits. So I, I do still want to see a, something that can split push on the side of uh, Lee Keep. And I'm very surprised they're banning both of these away. Huh? Yeah, Nar's still up, though. I wonder if Frank leave that. Um, they could just opt to blind pick it for Kurt, as it is his most comfortable champion. Uh, and that would mean that uh, Leaky would have to try to find something else. So, yeah, they do spend a ban. And wait a minute. Wait a minute, Clement. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm getting a little too excited here. After after that last game, the, the hovers got me got me going. Yeah, Woody has played the Yumi, has played the Renata. So, he's no stranger to Enchanters. But uh, I think Janna, we just haven't seen that champion this entire time, is going to go for Tom Kench, which I think is... Uh, is, is a very good champion in this situation because he does deny those resets and the burst damage mm -hmm. from going through. And I, I just wonder why they banned uh, the Trindamir and the GP. To be honest, I don't think Kurt has shown particularly much mastery for these champions. But they're still going to take it out. And Frank Esports are going to go for the tank option, taking a page right. out of Leaky's book. All right, Sejuani, we have seen this uh, not as successfully, but did like what it was setting up for. And uh, also, uh, K2 might be might be uh, taking a page out of someone else's. Wait a minute, no, that's a Gragas at the last. I think that is, I think that's a support Sejuani. Yeah, support Sejuani. We have seen this a couple of times. It does pair very well Ooh. with the. Uh... Aatrox, okay, Maliki, Aatrox, let's go. That's good. That's good. Split pusher. I like this one coming in. It is a winning matchup versus the Gragas. And we'll see how this Adrani does go. But you do need those melee attacks to make her passive work. So I do expect her to be much more useful in team fights. But the laning phase could be a bit rough. Yeah, I, I guess we'll have to see. I mean, it's 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 definitely a statement of intent from Frank Esports that they are going to try and set up and. And, and not only survive that laning phase, but try to maybe get the resets early, get the damage on. I mean, they do have that Lee Sin. He could be coming down to the bottom lane a little bit early, earlier than probably Hana can do. But I, only if uh, he keeps up in the farm. Last time we saw this this jungle matchup, it was Hana who was getting so much more out of his Viego as he was able to counter jungle. Did utilize a lot of the pressure dished out uh, by Nesty on the opposite side. So. We'll have to see. I mean, I I think this is a this is going to be a little bit of a different matchup with the rise in the mid. But Deep Cross are two and zero up. They are clearly not afraid to experiment a bit. Yeah. So going through the compositions, we do have a four one comp on the side of DCG. This is what I like to see from them, leveraging the strength of Leaky over Kurt. And on the other side for Frank Esports, it's still a very stock standard front to back team fight comp. You have great tanks because of the uh, the ice uh, ice armor coming through on the Sejuani and a hyper carry in the Jinx. Uh, but this time around, they also have the better mid jungle duo. So. What I expect to see uh, throughout this game is that uh, what Frank needs to do to kind of hang on and drag this later is for a lot of those roams from Pretender to potentially catch Leaky out and shut him down. Well, we'll have to find out if he can do it. Because if not, Deep Cross could be cruising to a 3-0, and zero, despite how close things have looked, especially last game. But mm. we are underway. Let's go ahead and take a look at our runes and masteries until Spellbook on the rise. No surprises there. The Conqueror Aatrox... The Aftershock, Sejuani. Yep, Sejuani, so we have seen her a couple of times. There has been some very wonky bot lanes, like the Aurelia Sejuani that was played in the LPL oh, for yeah. a split, uh, where you just use the melee attacks. But it's, uh, it's I, I think it's much more of a teamfight champion than than, than anything else. Uh, Criscata, on the other hand, also starting with the fleet footwork. He is, usually you do get poked out by the Jinx early levels, so that's normally what you expect to see. And uh, the jungle starts, I, I do like this coming in from uh, the Lee Sin. I feel like focusing on the bot lane is definitely where you want to go. Uh, Lee Sin with the flurry passive can get a lot of auto attacks down. So 
the gank potential there is quite high, especially you can just go against the uh, the top catch. Look at this level one here. Nesty has found Pretender on a, an early roam, actually forces the Mimic uh. out. Um, or excuse me, the clone out. And yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit scuffed there for Pretender. Yeah, and this is a matchup where we could see things flip a little bit, you know. If the uh, LeBlanc goes in for the Distorts and the Electrocute, she could just be frozen in place by the Rune Prison, and you can mm -hmm. see the ganks incoming, so it's not guaranteed to be a LeBlanc-favored uh, matchup for the most part. And uh, bot lane should be seeing Eminem just pushing this one out, but Woody does have a little bit more threat in this level 1. Yeah, is that Abyssal Dive? Of course, he just turns around, gets a bit of Rocket Poke, and K2 always going to be looking for those angles here. On this Sejuani, trying to stack up those frost stacks and seeing if they can't get somebody stunned on. Good chase down for this team as well if they can manage that, not just in in the two v two, but also team fights as you mentioned. Yeah, I, I do like their setup quite a bit. They have a strong two man game in the top side with Leaky and Hana, and that's a very high sustain plus reset uh, composition that they have. So. I do expect this game to devolve into a lot of side lane skirmishes, while the rest of the members, the bot laners, are going to stay relatively static uh, in the mid lane. Uh, you have a lot of moving parts, the Realm Warp that could come in as well. So if it does go into the more skirmishy style of game, I think DCG does have a decided lead, but it also does come down to how Pretender and Holo can snowball. Again, they're, they have the strongest mid jungle duo that you could possibly pick. But it is one that does require a bit of snowballing. It, it does have an expiration date. So we'll see how Frank can play this sort of off composition for them. Good trade from Criscata as he finds Eminem. Threading the needle there on his guns. Here comes Hollow. Double buffs on. In through Tribrush. But he's going to be matched on pressure by Hana. We could actually be in for 3v3. But Hana's much more interested in securing Scuttle. So that is going to be the back away. And Holo's actually spotted on a ward near the Raptor camp. I uh, do want to point out, not only is Holo spotted, uh, Pretender is also not doing very well in his own lane. If you look at the sustain here, he is down two pots. Nesty dealing with the lane very well off the level one trade. He's going to be able to hold this, and that just means there's not much threat from LeBlanc e Sin. You really want to get this ship going. We've seen a lot of early level three, level four Lee Sin ganks coming in. Now they're finally pressing in, but they're spotted immediately. Yeah, Hollow doesn't want to get sandwiched. Does land the Sonic Wave, but Nesty very safe in tower range. You don't want to take that one, as you'll be uh, getting a one-way ticket to Rune Prison. Yeah, and this game is starting out very slow, which I, I think for DCG is actually somewhat acceptable. You know, you, you live past the po uh, the pre-level 6 uh, power of Holo and Pretender. And then you get a lot more say with uh, Viego online. I think post-6, Viego does have a lot more fighting power uh, when you match it up against Lee Sin, but oh, DCG, find the level 4 trade! Alright, oh, hard to assault for the retreat path, but look at the damage Chris Scott is putting out here. Eminem can't really return fire, and that should force them out of lane. No first blood just yet, all the same. Checking in up to the Kirk top, here comes on, on the hard path, and forcing Curse to flash away, but he can't dodge that dash, and here come the Infernal Chains. He's trying to walk away from it, but first blood will be had by Lee. Uh, unfortunate game plan right there. Just going in on the wrong timing and just getting baited in by Leaky. So the 4-1 off to a good start in this one. We, the Gragas really doesn't have a good time in this matchup. Very hard for him to uh, even damage a Leaky in this trade. Here goes the dive. Yeah, once again, no. What he does get taken pretty low here as he flashes. Grey Health is on. Here comes Chris Cotter to follow. They're going to try oh, to get the outplay on Eminem. Oh, he might just be able to do it. They're trying to limp away. When he goes back in. Still threatening the lick and the auto. The double kill for Chris Cotta, And that is absolutely worth even as Woody dies. Such a beautiful trade. Woody knows that he's going down, but he's taking the AD carry with him. And that means they're going to miss an entire wave here. Very surprised that Eminem did not try to flash out for that one. He goes down, and Kirk could be going down again. Here's round two. No flash, no dash. He gets interrupted as Leaky Ooh. flashes in front of him, and Hana picks one up, too. The buddy system up top is starting to roll, Clement. Such nice play from Leaky to stop the body slam from getting away. And in the mid lane, you see Nesty just winning a straight-up 1v1 trade as well. So all three lanes pop in for DCG. Uh, we're going to take a look at this trade again. 
I, I did suspect that this Sejuani was going to have a very weak laning phase. This is indeed what we saw. And the calculations here from DCG, Chef's Kiss, absolutely perfect. Chris Kata tanks the minimal amount of turret shots. Woody goes in, tanks the shot that he needs, gets the slow down, and they're at it again. Oh, Eminem, this time he flashes the wall. Here comes the zap. Now K2 moving around. They should be able to back away from it. Polo's Polo here. is in here, but they turn the damage on. Woody... Holding on to that great health as Chris Scott is trying to stand in here. Oh, the body block and Woody keeps his carry alive. Man, get yourself a support like Woody. Chris Scott is loving this right now, but they're not done just yet. Pretender tried for revenge. Here's the blast going pop. Realm Warp in. Pretender wishing he hadn't popped away. However, the turnaround this time, they grab Hana on the return fire. And K2 is looking for Nesty. Deep cross gaming. Delved a little too greedily, a little too deep. And they have awoken Frank Esports. So Frank Esports finally on the board, getting that kill down um, at the very least. And, uh, you know, this is uh, getting really heated in the bottom side. Overall, I think with all the summoner downs, you still have to give the advantage to DCG. K2, though, with that ultimate up with the Glacial Prison, could be uh, could be looking for a repeat gank coming in from Polo. He still has that flash, so the insect is still there. I, I think all eyes are still going to be on this bottom lane. Yeah, we want to see that six proc. Now, Chris Scotta starting to roll ahead in the farm game as Eminem out of mana and really out of uh, anything he can do right now. It's going to result in some plates. Here comes Nasty roaming up to the top side, and the action has just opened up ever since the first four minutes were quiet. After that, everything else, Rune Prison comes in. Kurt just completely isolated and into the world ender. It's going to be the end of Kurt's world, at least for now, as he tries to dash away some fancy footwork for the fat man. But I don't think it's going to matter as Leaky gets him in the end. Hana and Holo juking it out, dueling it out in this jungle. But Hana knows when he has to run away. Eminem already down and sniped Goodbye. by Criscata. Oh, my goodness. Everything is coming up. Deep cross once again. The swallow into the delivery. And, yeah, Woody secures the kill. That's okay. He can have one as a treat. Straight up 2v2 kill happening in the bot side, now 3-0-0. Zero and zero. Unfortunately, Frank Esports, they just couldn't hold steady in the top lane. Like, all they need from Kurt is not do anything and focus down the bot side with the level 6 at Juani. They don't get to that uh, timing window open, and now Nesty is looking for more against Pretender. He will get away, but this game is looking so bad for DCG. 4,000 gold... Uh, so, so bad for Frank, excuse me. Already a 4,000 gold lead. On the side of DCG, they have all the kills on the carries exactly where they need it. And I, I just feel like Holo needs to pick at least one of these side lanes to shut down. As we're going to watch this again, Moonlight Vigil. I, I love the green color of the Moonlight Vigil on this skin. It's very hard to detect a lot of the times. Uh, green's abilities are usually favored here. And Woody does the scumbag support. Tom Kench thing takes I the away the it. objective. He earned it, man. He saved <laughs> Chris Scott's life so many times now. I, 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 I gotta let him have that one. But, but yeah, like, like this is so great for Deep Cross. A big lead in this game after such a long one where it was such a hard, frustrating close that they had to claw back because they were losing the scaling battle. A big gold edge here, sub ten minutes, and the only thing Frank have really been able to get a handful of return kills and a dragon. I mean, that's not much. Yeah, and most importantly, they don't have. Leeson and LeBlanc that can move across the map. That's this why you draft too. these two champions. Uh, they should be able to get away with it. I think what's scary for me is that K2 still has not hit level 6. So if this 3v3 does happen, um, it's still a very one-sided fight for Deep Cross Gaming. And they look like they're going to be setting up this play for a potential Herald into first break. All right, Scott on the front line. Dashes forward. They're going to try to lead Sejuani. He's still level 5, forced to flash away. The lick comes out. And they're going to chase him down. Here comes the Lee Sin. Doesn't even matter. And it's a Reset heartbreaker City. for Frank Esports. Eminem going down. The double kill coming through. And they just wreck shot. Uh, K2 was all laughters and smiles when he locked in this Sejuani. But uh, I got to feel that he might be regretting this pick so He's far. still level 5. I know. He's died three times. And they still don't have like the, the kill combo down. Yeah, Br Bristles, Bristles looking like a little uh, little piggy gone to market, I think. Two kills to the 10 of Deep Cross Gaming. A massive gold lead. Nesty even winning the lane out against Pretender, who should have been the favored one in, in, in most of the actual laning matchups. But Nesty certainly holding his own. Two kills for Leaky. I mean, it's there's just no edge on the map right now. And Leaky can just zone Kurt off. There's a level disadvantage. 
Hana just gets so much more value on the map, and we just have not seen this Lee Sin of Holos able to match. True, I just don't think he got enough out of Pretender's lane, and Pretender losing that level one was actually highly detrimental because he couldn't control the wave state anymore. We've never seen Pretender roam around with Lee Sin, no ganks coming into the mid lane, and now in the top side, there's a 50 CS lead coming in from Leaky. There's, uh, I have to say, at least a 1500 gold lead on Crystal. Yeah. At the very least, 1500. No, that's it's massive, and they're going to be able to get first brick, or excuse me, second brick, because they already got the one down bottom. Uh, and in exchange, it's it's a plate, it's a plate up top, uh, down bot. Nesty's still able to push this one back. Level two, our two level advantage over uh, Eminem as well. And you know, in the mid lane, he's going to be able to uh, get him in room prison if he comes too close. So Eminem knows he has to back away, and has done a good job of neutralizing that carry this game. A little bit of a riskier pick resulted, in not a whole lot here, Frank. Now, Kurt. He's going to be caught. Here comes the Abyssal Dive. Woody cutting him off at the pass, and they're going to funnel this one right into Hana. The Flash, the Dash, the Heartbreak. Doesn't matter. Criscata secures it up with a kill. Five and zero now on this Velios. Oh, I like the attempt from uh, Kurt to get away, but definitely could have played that a little bit better. I, I think you, you hold on to the Flash in that situation and uh, try to circumvent the champions and then get the body slam, but... You know, uh, at this point, I I have to imagine he's feeling pretty tilted. The top lane is in complete shamble. We do have a game pause here coming in. Yeah, uh, it's not going to help Frank too much as this one goes through. It looked like it was a quick disconnect. Hopefully, we'll get back into that pretty soon. But uh, the way the, the game state is right now, I mean, we have to keep in mind that this is a 2-0 for a 2-0 game, a 2-0 series right now for Deep Cross. And despite the fact that Frank had, had every means to close that last game, you have to wonder if that 50-minute bout is still weighing on their minds. Clearly, Deep Cross are the ones off to the races here, and they are, they're eyeballing a, uh, a date with Destiny up against J-Team next week. And it wouldn't be a clean sweep, like I said, but it would be a 3-0, and we've had quite a few of those already. Yeah, high chance for this to be a 3-0 after all that's happened. And right now, DCG are just sitting in strong, such a strong position because they, they have this full Mythic Edge. Eminem's also coming in here 1v3. I'm not, not uh -oh. sure how he expects to survive uh, this one. Another Abyssal Dive. Woody's just going to go for the outplay. Solo tries He's to lying. get the kill. No, a little help from Holo keeps Eminem alive. A little bit greedy there for the Kench, but uh, he'll be back after 15 seconds. Yeah, that might be the, uh, the the start of the comeback coming in from Frank Esports, maybe. It's something. They are going to be... They, I think they should be able to complete their Mythics at the very least and not give DCG uh, both the uh, both the Herald and the Drake fight when they're not getting any Mythics. So let's see if... Uh, oh, no. Eminem uh -oh. still does not have the Mythic. Never mind. <laughs> oh, no. K2 is in so much trouble. Three-level disadvantage that support for the top laner. Holo is going to come in. I don't know if it's going to matter. Maybe Leaky can get the 2v2. Oh, the oh, bull is dodged. The, the, the rocket doesn't go. The world ender. And it is the end of Frank's world again. 1v2. Make that 3. He wants Leaky more. cannot be stopped. He's going in back. He actually uses the Q backwards to get even more Teleport. on the map. He's dodging so many they abilities. They will kill him eventually, but when and how much investment is it going to take? Finally, it's shut down. Pretender does get some gold bounty, but oh boy. That was a 1v5. A straight yeah. up 1v5 Actual 1v5. 14 5. minutes. <laughs> Leak I is thought that was so just long. something salty solo queue players said, Clement. It's actually a real one happening in professional play. <laughs> Leaky even gets to hold on to his flash in that one. He doesn't overchase for the kill. He knows that he can save it later on and just expend resources. And look at how much <laughs> he actually yeah, that gets Last out team of fight. Okay, come on, guys. Now, now we're getting trolled. Does that count as a team fight? <laughs> that definitely doesn't. Okay. That definitely doesn't. Uh, this will... Uh, ooh, okay, Nesty. Cheeky teleport up to the top, try and push the wave here. Uh, I think that was ill-advised, personally. Uh, I think you're right. I think you're... I... Yeah. But uh, so is this. Pretender runs straight into Hana and face tanks so much damage. Now Deep Cross right back on the board. So despite a couple of uh, what you can call throws, Deep Cross are really no worse for the wear right now. And things are just starting to get a little bit weird. In this jungle, the dive, the knock, the bop, the Kurt is trying for the disengage, and he's not going to be able to do it as Hana opens up with a heartbreaker. In goes the dash. Oh, the three man! Oh, what a massive body slam! And now it is going to be Hana, Criscata, all the way on the board as they wipe off most of Frank Esports. 
out of the rift. Only Pretender, as he had died, uh, almost died already after that one, Max to base. Oh, Kurt's not even the best Gragas on the map. Hana just outduels him right there with the three man body bop into the World Ender. What a beautiful combo from DCG. That was Frank Eastward's potentially best uh, chance to come back into this one. They did have a numbers advantage after picking off uh, Nesty. That was. I kind of delivered himself, but let's watch how that combo went down. Frank, I think, went for a very risky play right here, and Kurt, despite being the tank, doesn't have the stats to survive. The better Gragas shows up in Hana, and he just ends this fight with the reset chain. Beautiful stuff coming out. DCG looking like they're going to close this one out in fashion. I, I, I think I probably have said that before in this series, but this time... This time it's real. <laughs> it's a pretty big lead at this point. Deep Cross, you know, they have they have every advantage that they need right now. And even though they've given Frank a couple of kills, it's starting to feel a little bit more like charity in this one. And we are about a uh, Clement. I know it's not a laning phase anymore, but but we we are we are about twelve minions away from a flame horizon. I think that tells you all you need to know about this game. Yeah, fourteen minions away. Is... Frank Esports is definitely nothing working out for them. I, I like how they're playing, though. They're basically sending their entire team for pickoffs, and hopefully if DCG uh, over-invest, they can then just use the resets and pick off more cross. kills. Leaky, he's going to just try to buy some time. Let's go. Uh, I, I don't think he's going to last very much longer, but that's still... Even with the kill here, there's so much pressure being put out by Deep Cross on two lanes. They should be able to get an inhibitor off the back of this. They've already got one turret. Should be able to secure the second for an outer and the trade of the top laner. That ain't worth. Yeah, it's going to be three towers and Harold still has a charge left. It might be an inhibitor just going down as well. It will be. So Leaky has a hero's death right here. DCG do the exact right thing. They don't overcommit to helping anyone. Here comes the super mega death rocket. Ah, uh, still not enough. Yeah, Hana's a little low. They do have to back away, but they do get two inhibitors in exchange for Leaky's life. He's going to come back up, has the teleport. They might look to end it right here, right now. Uh, Pretender oh! is going to go in, and they That's find Hana. Hana shut down. That should be it. Okay, they're going to back away now. Uh, Eminem not a part of that fight at all, as he was solo pushing on the side lane. And, uh, reminded me of the old Reckless special. That's going to be uh, it for now. 18 minutes, low death timers, of course, but nearly a 10,000 gold advantage for Deep Cross after everything. This is huge. I will say, though, there are actually some signs of life because Eminem able to split push two towers. He's getting his second item already. And look at Pretender. Out of nowhere, he's 301. He has that potential to actually just kill Criscata in the back, back line outright. So, Frank Esports, their postseason life's on the line. They do have those win conditions. That's very true. There are opportunities where uh, the gold is. It is on the important carries. The question is, can everybody else hold the line right now? Pretender and Eminem are going to be looking to hold things up. Here comes Deep Cross. Moving, setting up a death brush here. Woody on the front. Going to get spotted by Pretender. Frank going to have to back away. They're no strangers to losing out on jungle pressure this game. This series, I should say. And here comes Hana. Okay, Spectral Maw dodged. Last going taken. It's just going to be the inner tower. It looks as Kurt will have a hard time defending this. I feel like for DCG, they can just turn around and take this Baron at 20 minutes. They are that far ahead where the 5v5 definitely will be in their advantage, even with uh, face taking the Baron at this point. So I, I don't even think it's a risky Baron, uh, to be honest. So Not, not uh, relatively, DCG, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a very, very high percentage chance uh, Ooh, Baron to go racket. for. Oh, he sniped him! Oh, Eminem, you, you cheeky, cheeky boy. That was nicely done. Um, I think he thought maybe that was Dragon, but all the same, he'll take the red buff. Oh, well, Holo's gonna come in for the engage, but get spotted out immediately. Here comes the TP, though. Nesty forced the flash. That's the follow through of the kick. Maybe they find a catch here on to Nesty. He's tanky, but he can't last forever. And they will finally be able to take him down. Pretender getting his fourth kill of the game. That's nice. Bit of a split play coming in from DCG. They uh, they do trade the Drake for the uh, uh, for the kill right there, but they can still turn around for Baron. I, I feel like if you look at the cooldowns, that's actually a lot of resources down from Frank Esports. So I would not be surprised if DCG just start. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, Frank are going to have a hard time actually coming in to contest this because they need to keep the minions cleared at home. So without m and it's hard to have that sustained damage. As you mentioned, the cooldowns are low here. Yeah, they can try to sniff in for like a, a desperate uh, smite steal, but Leaky's just going to cut them off at the choke point. And this should go away. Uh, Rocket comes in. That would have been nice this time. It doesn't quite go down. The smite is right. And here comes the fight. The teleport through. Pretender going to get zoned off the rest of the team. Woody on the front line. K2. And here comes Nesty for round two. As Leaky is going to be the one to open up hostilities. But getting the kill credit. Leaky flashing forward. World Ender on. And those health bars are evaporating. And I think this is going to be it. Clement at 21 minutes and 15 seconds. And Hana finishes off the ace. They march down the base. And that's how it ends, not with a whimper, but an absolute bang as Deep Cross Gaming closed the gates on the playoffs for Frank Esports. A valiant effort by the team, but they couldn't quite do it. Deep Cross move on in a three and zero. 50 minute game two, only a 21 minute game in game three. And Deep Cross Gaming show why they have actually been the second seeded team throughout the majority of the split. Their overall player uh, talent is so incredibly high, and I think this series was Nesty even having good laning phases on champions we don't normally see him on. The LeBlanc was a bit of a surprise right here, and now is the important part for DCG because they typically have some memes prepared for you. Oh, it's uh, it's Woody's birthday, so they're gonna cel celebrate this one uh, with the crowd here. Oh, that's really cool. You gotta love it. So, uh, and how about that? Getting a, getting a win as well to, uh, to to give you the birthday gift. And I think Woody definitely had a really great game for himself today. I, I did criticize some of those Nautilus hooks. I liked what we saw ahead of him on the Tom Kench in particular this game, because that's when you saw that more killer instinct start to be incredibly valuable. They set up great dives. They set up great plays. And I think there was a little bit of worry that, that Eminem and K2 would be able to outplay him, but... The pressure everywhere else on the map really allowed them to take some of those 2v2s, and it was uh, it was beautiful to see. I think Chris Scotta is right back into it. So Deep Cross going up against J-Team for the next round, I think they'll have some confidence here, Clement. Yeah, especially after J-Team trash-talked them so hard with Uniboy, <laughs> saying true. that, you know, this series wasn't important at all. You didn't even need to watch it. I'm just going to be the better mid laner, uh, is what Uniboy said here. So I think it's uh, setting up to be a very interesting series. Once again, Frank will be eliminated from their postseason. Uh, I think for a team that was clobbered together at the very last second, uh, and they only got to play together in the same gaming house until I think the, uh, the later uh, two weeks of the split, they did very well for themselves. You could tell that, you know, Kurt maybe was, uh, as a new player to the professional scene, wasn't being able to catch up uh, much, but... The growth on Pretender, I think especially, was very noticeable. He really showcased why he was uh, on the bench uh, behind Maple through that year. And uh, I think that Frank do still have a lot of room uh, to grow. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think uh, not only does that does the team have a lot of room to grow together, I think the individual skill, it has been a little inconsistent. I think Pretender has made a number of mistakes, but we've seen a lot of raw skill from this player. There's a lot of potential there. Um, and in, in a league that that has been known for it. I mean, he was the man filling the bench when Maple was on that PSG roster. Of course, he's still with PSG, even though Bay has been the primary player. We'll see what next split brings for this Frank Esports roster. I think, um, you know, Holo didn't look quite as good as he did in the boom days last year. I think that's been a, a cause for concern. I think Curtis definitely struggled. Uh, against the top half of the league in particular. Uh, however, there are some really, really good things to see about this team. I mean, Eminem and K2 are a pretty deadly bottom lane, and Eminem maybe got a little bit too high fee in some of those fights and some of those engages, but he nearly saved the game in game number two, and I, I think he's definitely earned a lot of respect. Even though he already had that, I, I think teams are going to have to be very careful going mm -hmm. forward, and I think this team in the summer split certainly looks like a challenger, and uh, that's honestly that's the story of them. I mean, they, they came out of nowhere, the expectations, we didn't know where to rate them. And they certainly performed admirably in the top half of the league, just barely eking it in there, but I'll give it to them. I'll say DCG was even the bigger surprise because these were players that we thought yeah. were retired and they just kind of dredged them back up. It's like, Hey, surprise, Nesty's back. And it's like, okay, actually did it's pretty well. <laughs> there always has to be one like weird champ pool player to do some ridiculous stuff. I feel like last year was like <laughs> yeah. Moon Black, but this was a much more successful one. 
Um, Nesty has had some pretty solid games. We're starting to see his laning get back on form. We're starting to see mm. him play standard champions, but he still always has the more weird stuff in the back pocket. And I also, Leaky's not, not only is Leaky back, but I, I want to give Hana some credit because we wanted to see early pressure out of him against PSG. It didn't happen. This time around, mm. two times out of two in, on the Viego, he was just all over the map getting the resets. And I think you have to respect that pick now. Hana, when he gets on form, can deliver wins for his team. Yeah, DZG throughout this series has showcased a side that we don't normally see, which is they can play pretty dominant mid-jungle as well <laughs> if they are given the correct picks. I didn't expect that out of Nesty, but it's definitely true. He not only can roam, but he can also just straight up win the lane at times. So, uh, you know, before DCG was pretty much dead set as a team that roam mid-jungle, get Chris Cotta ahead, and play through... Uh, team fight advantages. Chris Gata, once again is going to get the MVP this game with 9-0-4 flawless kill death ratio and a lot of it just came from just stomping lane 2v2. I, I felt like the Sejuani mm -hmm. was a bit of a weakness there. They weren't able to have it survive lane until level 6 and Chris Gata plus Woody made them pay for it. Certainly had a little help from Hana a few times but that was a beautiful beautiful 2v2. I love the dives on the Abyssal Voids. They really made it work for him and well, Priscotta, he still definitely got my vote for the rookie of the split. I think this guy is absolutely popping off. And even if we don't see it 100% of the time in the playoffs now, that is going to be a threat. The teams are going to have to deal with J teams. Certainly better watch their backs going into next week. And yeah, it's good to see this team firing on all cylinders. A 3-0, like I said, not always the cleanest, but I think this game three really showcased what this team can do when they have the game plan in mind. Exactly. And, uh, really strong laning yeah. phase, great creative play. I hope to see more out of DCG versus J team. Absolutely. Well, we are going on a break. When we return, we'll be coming back with an interview with Rira Chu and Deep Cross Gaming. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this.